Hi everyone, it's Liam here from Racing the Races. So, first of all, I just want to give a shout out to James, who was um, very kind today. He left some uh, feedback to the team, um, saying, I think it was nice words about the analysis that we do. Um, obviously, we just uh, found funny story, lovely winner at three to one, um, considering I was highlighting her for a class four race, a uh, class two race, sorry, to see her in a class four race, and then at three to one, uh, four to one, three to one, in a class four race. Um, I thought that was mental. Um, and I think the race will work out well. And as always, look at the horses in behind, particularly that horse who finished second. Um, Spirit of Applause. I think there's probably plenty more to come from Spirit of Applause and has simply bumped into one uh, in Funny Story. So this video is going to be a review of some of the racing over the weekend um, at Epsom for the Derby and the Oaks. Um, highlighting a few horses that I thought were interesting um, particularly going forward um, maybe next time or uh, in the near future. We'll start off with the Woodcut Stakes um, the class two two-year-old over six furlongs and there was a couple that caught my eye here obviously um, Hartem very slowly away ran on well for third I think with a with a jumping out on terms he would have won that um, Probably the best of these from this race. And the other one that I thought was very interesting was Red and Blue Sovereign. Go and watch the race back and keep your eye on Red and Blue Sovereign. Never nearer sixth place. Um, went off a massive price. 80-1 to has, has now finished fifth and sixth. They're going to find a race with Red and Blue Sovereign. If it isn't next time, maybe when they go into Handicap Company. Um, could be very interesting in, in nurseries. Uh, and probably needs a bit further, probably needs seven furlongs already. Um, so yeah, just keep an eye on Red and Blue Sovereign, who finished sixth, well beaten, massive price, didn't show much on debut. The fact that the horse didn't show much on debut, and yet still ended up in the woodcut, they probably think there's a bit more to come from Red and Blue Sovereign, and um, maybe over seven, or maybe back into a, an easier race, I think there'll be... Um, a win coming soon for Red and Blue Sovereign. But definitely Harton was the the biggest eye catcher, I think. Um, if he'd got away on terms, I think he would have won that, wouldn't he? Moving on to the 2.35, um, the one mile handicap. Now, this is more talking about a horse who got beat. and uh, I was quite confident that he would get beat, and he did, and that's Ross Collin. Now, he will also be in my next video. He's dropped in the handicap again to 93. He finished third in the Buckingham Palace Stakes last year, rated 103. If he gets in, he's £10 lower. For me, if he doesn't get in, they made a mistake. I know it would be in hindsight they made a mistake, but I, I said before the race that he should have been running in the seven, not the mile and a half, um, mile and a half, mile and a half a furlong race. He doesn't stay that far, but he gets seven brilliantly, or beautifully, but he was already nicely handicapped. He was already eight pounds lower than when running in the Buckingham Palace Stakes. Did they need to try and get him another two pound lower? Um, if they miss out, I think it was a bit of a mistake running here. But if they don't and he does get in, Ross Collin is definitely one for Royal Ascot. Moving on to the 310. Now, a lot of the races that happened at Epsom ended up being suited to those with speed, a turn of foot, Anyone who stayed, any horse that stayed, even the trip, found it just happening a bit quick. You wanted to be, if you were running over 10 furlongs, you wanted to be a 9 furlong horse. If you wanted to uh, run in the mile and a half races, you wanted to have the speed for a mile and two. And here, I thought it was very um, interesting how the race panned out. Emily Upjohn has an impressive turn of foot, a really, really impressive when um, Frankie moved her out with three to go and kicked her for home, that was the telling move. Westover was just un wasn't unlucky. Westover just bumped into a horse that had a lot a, a much better turn of foot. Westover on good ground over a mile and a half in a bigger field. I would not be saying Emily Upjohn's definitely going to beat him again. I would not. I wouldn't say that that's a foregone conclusion. Now, I know a lot of people were saying Emily Upjohn would win again. In a stronger, a, a bigger field, a stronger pace, 
and on good ground rather than good to firm, which really suited that turn of foot, Westover can certainly could could reverse the four. Now, I believe Emily Upjohn's dropping in trip and Westover's staying over this trip, so we probably won't see that for a little while. But I believe West Westover should be marked up for that performance because he's ran Emily Upjohn to a within one and three quarter over a trip that suited Emily Upjohn perfectly in the end and the ground suited her perfectly and the way the race was run. So wherever Westover runs next, I imagine it'll be at Royal Ascot. Um, I think he would have a good chance. I think the um, Hardwick will definitely be uh, Westover's target and I think he'll run a nice race in that. Moving on to the 4.30, the Oaks, similar story here. The same scenario. The speed horse, Soul Sister, beat the stayer in Save the Last Dance. Now, Save the Last Dance, probably. A mile and a half might not be far enough, even on good ground for it, Save the Last Dance, in this company. You may find that she needs either soft ground or a mile and six, two mile. I could see her being a, a Royal Ascot horse, um, a Gold Cup horse of the future. Um, she could certainly be that sort of level. You may find that come um, Judmont Irish Oaks Day, the ground is soft enough for her and she goes and wins that. And I think Soul Sister was a very, very good winner. But I think Save the Last Answers run a really good race in second on in a race that's turned into too much of a sprint for her. She was being nudged along a lot earlier than a lot of the others. And yet she's actually ran away from a lot of the others. You take out Carnarfon, there was eight and a half lengths back to fourth in Mamoon June. You know, I know the rest were big prices, but I think the ground went against Save the Last Dance. The way the race was run, it turned into a sprint. And yeah, Soul Sister will... Soul Sister is probably going to drop back in trip, in my opinion, um, and will be very good over a mile and two, a mile and four. Save the last dance will be good over a mile and four, a mile and four on good ground. Again, just get that firm out of the going description and save the last dance. Showed that she was absolutely fine on the ground, just bumped into one who was rapid. Five forty-five. Um, this was not a horse that was of interest really, but just one that. You can see why trainers and owners get annoyed and why there's also some dodgy rides. So Darkness didn't get a dodgy ride at all. But he had moved to um, David O'Meara, rated 95, having previously been rated 99. He dropped all the way down to 85, but got beat, still got beat here. In his, it, This was his best run in probably 12 races, finished second, went up £4 for it. Or £3, but is it going to run off um, 88 because was meant to drop another pound um, before that race. But he's back up three pounds to 88, which for a horse that hasn't won in ages, 12, 13, I don't know how many runs it is, uh, 12 runs, now 13, to go up three pounds, that's so frustrating. I mean, there should almost be, if you finish second, maybe you only go up two pounds, a top of two pounds, because you're just... You're, you're penalising consistent horses, but you're also penalising horses too quickly for showing one bit of form, which Darkness did here. So yeah, I'm, uh, you know, this isn't a horse that I, uh, that I didn't think there was anything of, of interest in it, but I thought Connections will be very disappointed and frustrated with Darkness for finishing second there. Moving on to the Saturday, the Derby day, and we'll start with the Derby. Um, August. Rodan demonstrated that he just didn't like the soft ground in the Guineas, just like Little Big Bear. Um, both of them have come out and won since after disappointing in the Guineas. Soul Sister did something similar in, in the Oaks. If we just go back to the Oaks, she was, where is it? I think she was last of eight at Newbury on soft ground. The ground at Epsom was completely different to soft ground. It wasn't just that it was good ground, whereas they could still get get that um, get away with it sort of thing this was completely different and it really affected those who had, had run on soft ground like the likes of arrest and those who had like run on soft ground and hated it the likes of august rodan who bounced back in great style here and for me i thought it was a very impressive win 
uh, beating King of Steel. When King of Steel kicked for home, I thought, okay, he might win this at a massive price. And then I looked to see who was the horse gaining on him. I thought if any horse gaining on him was going to catch him and, and show that the class that they thought he was, it was Augusta Rodin. And yeah, that was a really good performance. There's a few behind that you wouldn't want to give up on. You probably won't want to give up on the Foxes. Probably just found this too too tough. Um, passenger, arrest, even military order, you know, they're going to be better. They might not have let themselves down on this ground, whereas Augusta Rodin certainly did. Um, you know, if you if you were on the likes of arrest or those in behind, when it comes back to good ground, I think they'll they'll um, bounce back to form personally. But August Rodan, that you know, they're talking about dropping him in trip, not going for the St. Ledger. I think he would actually win the St. Ledger. They're thinking of dropping him in trip. I think that totally understand why with the analysis that I'm just saying that if you wanted a horse to win a mile and a half race, you needed a horse who was a good over a mile and two. Moving on to the 320, um, the dash. BHA stewards, what are they going on about? How they can say that those horses who um, were slowly away due to the stall opening fractionally late were not affected are talking absolute rubbish. And we've only got to look look down here. Vintage Claret's 14th, Live in the Moment 20th, Lehu uh, 20th, sorry, Live in the Moment 17th. Why were they that far back? Because the stalls opened late and they were caught out and they were always on the back foot then. Who caught my eye from this race of those uh, that did get runs? Well, one that didn't actually was Vinted Claret. The way he got supported into 15 to 2 demonstrates to me that they do think he's ready to win a race. And we've highlighted him before and we've highlighted him again um, in our handicap analysis. Alligator Alley. Go and watch that run from Alligator Alley. Jason Watson didn't move once he got um, hampered. Not even, he didn't even try. I'm really, really surprised. I think the stewards got distracted by the stalls. Otherwise, that was, for me, one of the most pathetic rides um, from a jockey on a horse. He didn't move. He didn't even, you know, nudge it out or anything. There was a couple that that did try when they were, you know, a long way back. Sappy Osborne, Sean Bowen on Mockatill. Both gave efforts on their rides. Came from the dark with Sappy Osborne's. Both asked for efforts, tried, got closer, ran on strongly. Both can win races. Alligator Alley, I thought that was, I thought it was a pathetic effort from the jockey. Okay, he might not have won, but I thought the rule is that you ride to try and gain the best possible position. Jason Watson didn't ride. It's not that he didn't ride for the best possible position. He didn't ride, he didn't move. Watch him, he does not make one little bit of effort after he's been hampered and yet he's still close enough and closer than horses where the jockeys are going for it so i thought that was um interesting i thought it was a poor ride i thought he should have got a um suspension for it the bha stewards haven't done their job twice in this race they haven't done their job with the stalls and they haven't done their job with uh, jockeys not riding out to the best of their ability moving on to the 355 uh, so we were on balance play here, who finished third. Obviously, a little bit disappointing because we were on at a bigger price. It just wants further again, doesn't he? Didn't handle the track. Um, and yet, again, looked like even a mile and two wasn't far enough for him. Running on again at the finish. He could be the sort of horse that ends up in a St. Ledger. Um, I know that's a big talk for a horse who's only rated, what is he rated, 81? There's definitely a handicap in him over further again a mile and a half he could get away with a mile and two on a more conventional track um but a mile and a half definitely um is where i think we'll see balance play come into his own even more um i do think he's nicely handicapped still the 430 um the next two horses were both disappointments for us however they both progressed at this stage last season so they're almost Horses you don't want to give up on. So Halifon finished fifth, didn't really get involved, dropped a couple of pounds in the handicap, I believe. I can't remember. Um, I'm sure he did. But with that in mind, he finished second in this race last year before going and winning at York and then winning at Chester. So he won two consecutive races after uh, running well at Epsom on his return. This year, they'd had a couple of runs and 
maybe this wasn't the target. Maybe they didn't want to go here, but you know, next time if he goes back to York, which I, I don't think they will, I think that was a bit of a waste of a win. It was only worth seven grand. I'll keep my eye on Halifon because this is the time of year for him. And again, maybe the ground was just too fast for him. The rattling fast, good to firm ground. Um, you know, his previous efforts at York, Chester and Epsom had come on good ground. So I think it was just so fast that it caught even those out that had good form, a good ground form. And similar story for the next one. Um, many a star ran disappointingly, only 10th. We've got to remember, he didn't run particularly well in this race last year. I think it was only 10th in this race last year. He was ninth. Now, I hoped that Tom had been booked because they thought he could go well off his handicap mark. After being disappointing at Epsom, he disappointed at Newmarket again. But then he went and finished first at Goodwood, second at Goodwood, second at Ascot. So maybe he's not quite there yet. He, and that was his first run back, whereas he'd had a few runs last year. On his first run back last year, he finished second off 80. He then finished sixth. And then he started to get going. Maybe he needed this run this time. And he's one to keep an eye out for next time, which potentially could be... You know, they might even save him for the, the Stewards Cup consolation race, um, which he won last year. He won that off a mark of 85. I think he's about that this year. Um, or he might still be off 87. But if he turned off at 87, you'd think he'd have a good chance now that he'd had that run under his belt. So there's just a few thoughts, a few horses to keep an eye on. A quick recap. Hartem will definitely um, show that he's of this level, whilst Red and Blue Sovereign can definitely pick up a race. Um, so keep an eye out for him. Ross Collin, if he gets in that uh, Buckingham Palace stakes off his £10 lower mark, would surely have a great chance. Westover probably just didn't like the ground. I think it turned into a sprint and it suited those um, who had more speed rather than stamina. Same for Save the Last Dance compared to Soul Sister. Um, Darkness, that was just frustrating for the owners, I'm sure. Auguste Rodin, yeah, very impressive performance clearly bounced back on better going and much much better going of those in behind in the dash don't give up on live in the moment don't give up on vintage clarets alligator alley came from the bar mockatil they all have reasons why they can bounce back next time obviously if they're all in the same race they can't uh, balance play probably wants further or might get away with this trip uh, on a more conventional track halifon and many a star both could start going forward from this stage now that they've had these runs, um, that maybe they weren't going for it this year. 